This is our first morning waking up and it being raining. It started raining like four o'clock this morning or so. And it's raining pretty hard actually. We're out we're in uh La Crosse, Wisconsin this morning. In a little back channel, ten feet of water or so. As we move down closer to the city center, I'm seeing even more homeless camps along these this backwaters of the Mississippi here. And honestly, I don't really blame folks if you're gonna be homeless or you're gonna kinda do it your own way and you don't have any money, I suppose. I mean, I'm, I imagine, I'm guessing a lot of these folks are got bigger problems, you know, that lead to homelessness. That's usually the way it goes, but but yeah, I mean, I've lived in tents. I've lived in cars. I've obviously lived on boats. I've lived off of scooters and motorcycles. You know, it living in a house and paying rent or paying a mortgage is not for everybody. And so I try not to be too, you know, critical about them. And, you know, they got each other. <laughs> and that's a lot, as Bon Jovi said. So, I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I mean, good way to be free. Got your bath right out your front door. There's probably fish. Easy access to the quick trips and the Walmarts. Some of them have canoes. Kind of chilly this morning, chilly and raining, so I'm taking the footage from inside the cabin, guys, through dirty windows. I apologize. I'm being a bad host this morning. <laughs> That's why I took my vacation in Beirut to get her out of my mind to find some peace. Not gonna be easy. Everywhere I look, something reminds me of her. We've been beating against this wind for a couple hours. I'm kind of sick of it. <clears throat> so I see this possibly nice little cove over here where the, surrounded by sand dunes. It's an island actually. And if the depth is good enough in there, we're gonna pull up and nose up to that beach and let Wavy run around and make some food. So let's see what happens. Stay tuned guys. So far so good. Oh, Wavy's excited. She hasn't even got to go pee this morning. I'm a terrible parent. Still got four feet. I think we're gonna make it. Stay, stay, stay. 
Stay. Stay. Stay. Coming up on another lock here. This is the town of Genoa, I think is how you pronounce it, Wisconsin. It's just a little town, little river town. And we'll see if they have a, a municipal dock. And if so, maybe we'll stop and go walk around for a few minutes. All right, guys, let me show you what we did. I'll turn the phone around for you. That's the little town of Genoa, Wisconsin. I might be pronouncing that wrong. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, there's no place to hang. Well, I mean that right along the shoreline there is the is the channel, the shipping lane where all the the barges go through. So we pulled off to the side into this flood field. I guess is what I would call it, where it's about three. Some spots are like a foot and a half deep. The particular spot we're in is about three feet deep. And I know a barge would never come up here <laughs> never chase us down in three feet it wouldn't even be able to so i set both anchors because the last thing i would want to do is wake up in the middle of the night going over that dam there but uh it's not going to happen because very low current right here and you know the possibility of two anchors dragging that far is almost impossible so but that said we're going to sit on the barge here for a while just make sure it doesn't go anywhere, and then we're going to probably launch the dinghy and go across the river here and go under that bridge right there and go walk around town. So stay tuned. Well, sometimes it goes like this, guys and gals. I really didn't like that spot that close to the dam. I knew that I would wake up in the middle of the night and my, you know, half asleep and have to look out the windows and worry that we might be dragging the anchor. <laughs> so I came up around the bend here, this break wall, and I'm in about mm, 10, 11 feet of water or something like that. And I put both anchors down. <clears throat> My reasoning is, and I know this is just being way over cautious, but if we dragged anchor some, for some reason, we'd go right into the, into the break wall because the the lock and dam is around the corner and plus around the corner it turns into like two and three feet of water so if we were dragging anchors eventually it would just you know <laughs> that's my reasoning <laughs> i've never dragged an anchor is i'm i'd have to think about it i don't think i've ever i mean not far i've had an anchor you know move around a little bit in a circle in the middle of the night you know like a five square foot radius or something but <clears throat> never dragged one any distance so anyways, this is where we're hanging out tonight. Uh, ran out of daylight, obviously. And right across the road there is Genoa, Wisconsin. They don't really have a place for a boat to pull up and check them out, which is kind of their loss because we would be there right now. Maybe find a place to have a beer or something. And looking at that church right there. But they made it too hard. So we'll continue on. Good morning, guys and gals. So we are passing through the Lock and Dam. I think it's number seven, number seven or number eight. Uh, Genoa, Wisconsin, just a little little town on the Wisconsin side. We're almost to Iowa. And I just called the Lockmaster on the radio and about 10 minutes, he's gonna turn the green light on for me. He said he put some lines out if I want to tie on the side back and also float. So let's see what happens. Stay tuned. Wavy so wants to get off the boat. <laughs> We're gonna stop soon, I promise. <laughs> okay, we got the green light. It's blinking. I see it. Let's do it. See, I'm going right into the wind. Oh yeah, this is gonna work great. I just have it a little above idle. And I'm just barely moving forward. We're just kind of zigzagging forward. I can't help but move forward a little bit. I can't find that sweet spot where I'm just sitting still. <laughs> so 
Hopefully it drains in time. You can see the staining on the bottom of the walls there. It's slowly going down and hopefully I won't. It'll open the front gates before I get there. <laughs> and they open in, by the way, so. You know, I'll say this just while I'm thinking about it. This is another reason why having enough horsepower on a boat is smart. I, again, I couldn't pull this off by floating in the middle and kind of powering back and forth and steering it at really low speeds with a 9.9 .9 or a 15 or even a 20 on this boat. So, um, yeah, just, you know, please listen to me in this regard. Do yourself a favor when you build your boat, you know, 40, 50, 60 horsepower. It's like they're starting to open. I try to get, I try to get footage for you that doesn't have the scooter in it all the time. It's difficult, especially when you're kind of stuck at the wheel in this regard, but you can see those, the, it's starting to open right now. Here, I'll come in. There you go. Yep, they're opening up. Maybe on one of the easier locks, like on the, the Tom Big B, the Tin Tom, uh, I'll try to film the entire process like in real time and maybe just put up a special video that's unedited for that because I know there are folks out there who would like to see the whole thing. So I'll, I'll try to do that. Okay guys, we made it through and uh, I didn't have the phone on, but uh, he, he gave me a little FYI tip is if I do request to have lines drop down on the sides to do it on the side that the lock house is on, which in this way would be on this side or my port side. I had my bumpers on, on the starboard side, so I wasn't able to do it even if I wanted to, but uh, I plan on getting bumpers on both sides and just having them on all the time, at least during the lock part of this trip. So yeah, learn something every day and they were really friendly. So, okay, let's continue on. We are south of, of whatever lock that was. I think that was lock seven. So continue on, stay tuned guys. channel's pretty narrow right here so I'm having to you know get closer to the barge than I normally would but there's no choice I'll probably get a little bit awake from him too Let's see how this goes few minutes we are going to be in a spot where three states come together Minnesota Wisconsin and Iowa right smack in the middle of the river so let's just pass right over it and see if we feel any different <laughs> We are coming up on Lansing, Iowa, and I'm kind of waiting for this one. I have gone through here before on my scooter when I was coming back from the Driftless trip this, uh, this last summer, and I just kind of made a mental note that I wanted to stop here and really explore it when we're on this trip, so this is another milestone, guys. Lansing, Iowa. Okay, so I went around, coming down south, looking at the, the shoreline here, and I'm not seeing any municipal parking, and but there is a spot up, let me see if I can show you, back up in here, that on the other direction, on the other side of the bridge, we'll go check that out. I did see some houseboats up there, it looked like it was probably a marina or something, but we can anchor if nothing else. I'm just kind of half thinking of maybe unloading the scooter and going exploring if we can, so we'll keep looking.
gave you a little tour. Lansing, Iowa. Here in the fall colors. It is uh, Wednesday, I think, and it was blowing really hard yesterday from the south, which was making travel kind of hard. Anytime you're pushing into the wind, it's almost not worth it if you can stop. So we stopped here in Lansing yesterday, which I, you probably already know, and we're in this back slough on this island, and I'm going to turn the phone around. I just got up. I'm making coffee, but uh, I'm seeing some fish jump. Let me show you. Yeah, so I was standing out here, looking around. I really want to cast over there. I got some worms last night. They're only three fifty for a dozen, which is like a the best deal I've had in a while. They're good ones too, Canadian night crawlers. But maybe we can pull the anchor. <clears throat> See, look at that. They keep jumping. There's one that jumped right there. I'm guessing they're bass. Yeah, yeah, see, look, there's one right there. Look at that. Can you see that little? So they're jumping. They're hard to catch on a, on film because <laughs> you got to be aiming in exactly the right direction. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm thinking right over there in that log jam. We'll pull the anchors, pull up a little closer. And now that the wind's not blowing us around everywhere, we won't have the danger of going in there. That's why I was trying to stay in the middle here. And this is pretty deep. It's like 12 feet deep back here. So... Yeah, nice spot. And the wind died down. It's going to make things easier. So I'll drink some coffee, and we will get situated. Let's do some fishing. Let me show you guys something. So, see this banana? See that hole right there? I have a mouse that's living on the boat, like a castaway, living, I think, under the floor. There's, you know, quite a bit of basement space underneath the floor here. And he's lived with me since, well, since Ontonagon. He's a traveling mouse. He comes out at night. Sometimes Wavy hears him and tries to chase him off. Sometimes I hear him, try to catch him. I've turned the light on a couple times and caught him. He comes and eats butter. So I often have to, like, cut the top of the butter off where he's been chewing. I just discovered my banana is ruined. I'm not going to eat anything that a filthy little mouse has been eating. So start putting the butter in the fridge. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, if I leave any food out, like if I dare leave like a piece of bread or something, he'll come and just eat enough of it to ruin it. So I have rat traps, um, but they're too big to catch him. And we are going to uh, get a mouse trap. I'm making the bed right now. But we're going to catch this guy. Since you're useless and lazy. I always put my worms in a better container so they last longer. How are you guys doing in there? Pulled up the anchors, moving the mothership closer to the fishing grounds. Doesn't this just look like prime bass and panfish waters? All that structure, which is also going to lead to snags, undoubtedly, but if we're getting the fish, who cares? I've got endless hooks. Okay, guys, I got this pole at a yard sale this last summer for five bucks. Bobber, simple fishing. If you want exciting fishing, there's lots of channels on YouTube for that. But we just, we're not a fishing channel, but we do a lot of fishing <laughs> because we're often on the water. <laughs> and uh, if, I, if I get some bites or catch a fish, I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera in such a way that I can kind of show you guys. But let me just make sure there's fish in here first. All right, guys, I am not haven't got a single bite, which usually tells me. I see fish jumping occasionally, and they look like bass to me. I saw one jump over here, so I went over in the, the deeper section. 
And I know if I put more effort into it, you know, when it was like throwing spinners and stuff, you know, it'd be different. But I see a fisherman coming down this way. Maybe if he comes by and talks, I will ask him some of the secrets of the area. Another idea I have, yesterday when we went around the bend and went to town, I saw a fisherman jigging next to the to the bridge pillars, which is a pretty common thing. You know, I think fish like to hang around stuff like that, and I know they do it, uh, well, they do it sometimes in Ontonagon and other places I've been and seen. So if we don't catch something here in another half an hour or so, I think we're going to motor up there and maybe we'll try to get somewhere close to one of those pillars and try a little jigging, you know, so we'll just keep trying this morning. I say this morning's for fishing, so stay tuned. So we are striking out here. Why don't we go up the slough a little bit, to back towards the Mississippi around that corner, and we'll try another spot. We're not going to give up. When we're in fishing mode, I feel like the barge becomes the world's most inconvenient bass boat. <laughs> like you can fish off of it but moving it from spot to spot and coming up close and you know turn the motor on throwing an anchor you know it's <laughs> it's in bass boat mode Fishing for? I've been fishing, trying to fish too. We're fishing for crappies. Oh, crappies? Okay. Oh. Um, will a worm catch them? Not a crappie. Okay. Is there anything else to catch? Well, you can probably throw it up in the back. So you might catch them out of the bluegill. Up at over here? here. Okay. What If I was going for a crappie, what would I use? Minnows. Minnows, okay. But, yeah. Are there any bass in here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys. So I just talked to those fishermen. They're, they're, they're fishing for crappies, but they're using minnows. They say that worms won't catch them, and that's probably true. I've caught crappies on, on worms before but it's not their preferred bait but they said right over here might be some bluegills and maybe some bass so we're gonna try it stay tuned okay here's a little spot that maybe some bluegills are in and I love catching bluegills you would think this would just be loaded with panfish All right, guys, we tried. <laughs> I did get a little nibble, but it was probably just a little something. This is looks like crappie, bass, and he's the guys over there said some walleye, and you know using a worm, and not really knowing where to fish and how to fish. This particular place is gonna probably not result in much, but that's okay. Next time we get a chance, we will pick up some minnows. The trick about minnows is keeping them alive for very long, but, um, you know, we'll just, we'll figure it out. I mean, we're going to catch some fish one way or another, and we've got the entire Great Loop to fish, so <laughs> it's not like <laughs> when we get to Florida and we get down to those areas, there's just even more fish to catch, so. Okay, guys, there's no wind today, so it's probably a good transit day, so let's just hit the river, and uh, we will return to fishing. So if you're here for fishing and you like fishing, don't be discouraged. I'm not. I'm in some ways YouTube's worst fisherman, but that's there is worse fishermen than me, but they just don't film it and they don't put it on YouTube. <laughs> or I'm shameless. <laughs> okay, guys, stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're leaving Lansing, Iowa here, not to get be mistaken for Lansing, Michigan. Hard to mistake it. <laughs> If you're looking for a little town to relocate to, let's say you're in that mode of life where you're looking to find a new place to live, quieter, smaller rural town or something, move out of the city, a 
I'll tell you, this is a good town to probably at least take a look at. It's just, it's got a good feeling. If I was still in that mode, I would, it would be on my short list. So, okay guys, that way.